we hear pretty well usually. Yeah. Uh, um, well, that's that's interesting because how we hear has a, a lot to do with the loudspeaker design. Uh, I have to admit, originally I didn't realize that. If you think about how we hear, particularly how how we tell what direction a sound came from or the source of a sound, it's several things. You have the time difference between the sound or reaching the right and left ear. Uh, you have the frequency response alteration that the shadowed side of your head produces uh, in the uh, ear. And those those two things, the loudness difference between the two ears and the time difference between the two ears, uh, do account for most of the right and left um, localization, but not all of it. For example, if there's a sound directly in front of you, how are you able to tell what height that sound is? Because the sound arrives at your ears equally to the right and left ear. So, And so you have the differences in time, the differences in intensity, uh, but there's also more to it still. In the early days of the stereo reproduction, they put uh, microphones inside of people's ears on little tiny tubes and then they measured the frequency response of your ears as the sound source moved right to left. What they found was something really unexpected is there's um, a pair of notches in the frequency response that move according to what angle the sound was coming in at. Anyway, what they discovered was that part of your localization process involves these two cancellation notches that move uh, with in frequency with the location. And what they discovered is those things are produced by the shape of your outer ear. And uh, they also are how you can hear the height of a sound uh, even though what's what's arriving at your two ears is essentially the same. Those notches that your ears produce uh, aren't don't sound like defects like they look like in a measurement but they are what you use to tell the height and location of a sound. All of this uh, matters because uh, in developing the loudspeakers the, the object was to get the drivers to combine into a single source and that also uh, has a profound effect on how they radiate. Um, one simple source of sound, uh, if it was directly in front of you, what reaches your right and left ears uh, is exactly the same. So a weird, a weird observation was that as, uh, as I was working on the, the Synergy and Unity horns to, to try and get them to combine into actually one source, Sort of a weird observation was that uh, the, the better the measurements looked, in other words, the more they were becoming a single source, the harder it was to hear how far away the speaker was if you had your eyes closed. And that's important because your eyes are part of your hearing system. You, you really cannot separate the two, uh, the inputs from both systems unless you actually close your eyes. That's when they talk about blind testing. That's the whole point of that, is you're taking away the knowledge of what you're listening to, and you're forced to make a judgment uh, based exclusively on what your ears tell you. So why does that matter? Well, most speakers, if you close your eyes, um, you'd be, it'd be easy to point at where the speaker is, and it would be also pretty easy to guess how far away it is based on what you hear. But what I was noticing as things got, as the speakers got better and better, that it, it became, e it was still easy to point at where it was, uh, direction, but it got harder and harder to tell where it was at distance. One of the things that's I guess something that I didn't realize about how your hearing system works is that your brain and ears are constantly seeking out information and rejecting the noise. Um, 
that's how you're able to pick out a conversation across a crowded room. Um, it's how you're able to listen to a distorted boombox and still enjoy the music. Uh, it's because your, your brain and hearing system automatically listens past that stuff. And that's one of the things that makes loudspeakers hard to develop is because your ears are trying to reject all of the bad stuff and look for the, the good stuff. So how can you separate what you want uh, from what your brain's telling you? And one way we found was to do something that was done in the way old days for recording tape called a generation loss test. And what you do is use a, uh, a, record, a measurement microphone that has flat response and record music coming out of a speaker. And you can listen to it on the first pass uh, with headphones. And the funny thing is, you usually, even though it's a measurement microphone, when you remove the stereo image process that your brain has, then the flaws become much more audible. And by wearing headphones and listening to a monaural recording, that's what you're doing. You're bypassing uh, <coughs> the stereo imaging process. So when we were developing the speakers, we weren't exactly sure what, we weren't completely confident we were going the right direction because this was uh, nobody built point sources back then. Nobody really tried to make a single point of sound. And uh, so doing the generation loss recordings, that that was pretty uh, informative. You could really hear, uh, even in the first generation, the first pass, that there was something wrong with a lot of speakers. Well, it was a situation where the uh, as the speakers became better according to the measurements they also got harder to tell how far away they were uh, if your eyes were closed and that was sort of a huh that's a weird thing um, but the magnitude of that didn't really strike till uh, you switch to stereo and there you have a really different situation in uh, in this case, what you had was a speakers. Well, let's let's say you had two pairs of speakers that were had the same frequency response, uh, same timber when you listen to them, except they sound completely different when you listen to them in stereo. In the case of one pair of speakers, if you, clo if you just listen to one, it would be easy to tell how far away it was with your eyes closed. The other speaker, it was very hard to tell how far away it was with your eyes closed. If you only had one speaker, um, I'm not sure you could say one would be better than the other, uh, but when you put them in stereo, uh, there was a giant difference between them. And the reason is the stereo image is sort of a, a trick that the recording is supposed to be fooling you into thinking that they're somewhere else, a different environment. So if you had speakers that were constantly shouting out, here I am, I'm 10 feet away, uh, that greatly interferes with the stereo image, especially if it's what they're trying to convey was, let's say, something at a great distance. Uh, the, the identity of the speaker uh, contradicts what the recording is. And uh, it's, it's a far away impression from the recording and the close-up impression that the speakers give, that kind of destroys the whole stereo, the phantom image part of it.